I'm Chris Carlson. I'm probably best known by my late husband's work. He wrote Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and it's all small stuff. But what most people don't know is that it was his 10th book, and it took 10 years to write that book. And so it was an incredible time period in our lives. It was crazy and busy and fun, and, and we enjoyed every moment of it. And in many ways, I had just this incredibly idyllic life. You know, I met Richard when I was 18. It was a fairy tale kind of romance. We fell in love instantly, and we pretty much everything we set out to do, we achieved. And then one day, just like any other day for me, um, he walked out the door and he didn't return. He passed away very suddenly on a flight, a routine flight to New York from a pulmonary embolism. And it's not a tragedy that's unique to me and my family. Um, you know, loss happens. Loss happens to all of us. And every one of us is going to have our days of bereavement at some point in our lives. It just happened early for me and my girls and for Richard, too. I wrote Heartbroken Open, a memoir through loss to self-discovery during the first, well, actually after the first year of my grief. What I did the first year was I wrote a journal. I kept a journal. And then that 80,000-word journal was woven back into a manuscript that I put together the second year of my grief. It wasn't the first book that I wrote. Richard and I wrote uh, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff in Love together. And that was amazing. That was amazing for our marriage. It was a wonderful experience. We kind of joked about how everyone should write a book on a relationship together because it was such a fun experience to not only to write it, but to go out and promote it together too. It was like dancing a waltz together. We had so much fun. But Heartbroken Open, is as much as it is a journey about loss, it really is a journey about life and love. And it isn't just applicable to people who are going through loss of the kind that I went through. It's applicable to people who may be going through divorce. You know, people lose things all the time in life. We go through changes and transitions and whether it's work-related or, you know, something happens to our family member, a family member gets sick, we get news that maybe we have an illness or disease that changes our life, changes the scope of our life. And what I found is that grief is really an emotional response to change that we haven't accepted yet. And there was a mantra that came to me, very much like a life preserver in stormy seas. It was a mantra, is a practice, something that Richard and I had put into practice, like all of the Don't Sweat the Small Stuff chapters. If you really notice what those chapters are, there are small things, small ways, small intentions that you can do every day that will change your life because it makes your life a spiritual practice. And the mantra surrender, trust, and accept was a mantra that really led me completely through loss. It was amazing. You know, I kept saying to myself over and over every day, I have to surrender to this. I have to surrender to what I cannot change, that, that I have to open to this experience because this is an experience that was given to me too. Out of all the blessings and the amazing life that we had together, I was really blessed to realize that the circumstances, this is something that Richard said often, that the circumstances of life don't make or break you, but they rather reveal who you are. And I think it's a magical thing in a way that we can be in this broken place in life, that sometimes in our lowest points, there comes something to us, there comes a creativity, grace, um, the power of spirit comes to us, and we can rebuild our lives. And as long as we surrender and trust in that process, that life and love will lead the way. Richard and I have always looked at life um, as if there is a divine plan operating, and it's those serendipitous, synchronistic moments, those magical moments of life that have always told us that that is the language of the divine. That is how the divine says, you know, spirit says, I'm here, <laughs> let me show you how. Well, I had this amazing story, just uh, was standing in a coffee shop line, and I was waiting. Um, waiting with some friends for their coffee. I had ordered a banana nut muffin and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, Richard, can you believe that I'm thinking about giving up coffee? 
Richard had given me coffee, had started me on coffee uh, in my coffee addiction many, many years earlier in college. And it was our time together to spend together was to drink our coffee and talk about life, converse about life. And I was standing in line and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, Richard, can you believe I'm thinking about giving up coffee? And then the person the, behind the counter yells, for the next coffee cup. Richard yells out the same Richard and this guy walks up and he turns around and I'm standing right behind him and he's holding two cups and he turns to me and he says, oh my gosh, would you like a cup of coffee? They've given me two by mistake. And he hands me this tall cup with Richard you know, pencil scrawled on the cup. And I just laughed and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's not a mistake.